One of the questions that came up while you were speaking, though, is, and I've had it for several months listening to you, um, what, what is the difference between excitement and joy? Um, is there a difference? No. No difference? You can tell by the way you feel. In other words, when we talk about passion, these words are all scanty. That's why we want you to begin to feel the vibrational language rather than try to speak the verbal language, which is really an interesting thing to say to a writer. But what you are writing, everything that you write, everything that you write and every bit of dialogue that you present, your goal is to produce an emotional response from the audience that is participating in it. So it's all an emotional thing that you're doing. If you will allow yourself to create the emotional response within you, then you will find the words that create the emotional response in those who are reading it. That's really the key to all of this. Did you hear that? Do you want us to back up again? Yeah, please do. So ask your question again, because it was central to what you were asking. Uh, my question was, what's the difference between excitement and joy? And we want to say, words don't matter, blah, 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 blah. But can you bring yourself around to contemplating a feeling of joy? Yes. Can you bring yourself around to contemplating a feeling of excitement? Yes. And in your mind, are they different or the same? They're different. In what way? Joy is kind of a deep-seated feeling. For me, in excitement, I can make decisions that I regret. I can buy something that I don't want. I can date a girl that I don't really like. Um, you know... <laughs> I, I, I can make decisions that I regret. So let's say from the way you are defining it, from the further description that you're offering, that when you talk about joy, you're talking about complete immersion and alignment with your broader perspective. And when you're talking about excitement, you might not be in that alignment. But it's positive. I guess that's... Is the no, it isn't. Not if it feels like that. Well, it no, feels it good in the moment to like buy the car or date the girl, but... Afterwards, I'm like, man, that was a real waste of money. Or in both cases, you know, it's just like, <laughs> But in the moment, it was alignment. It was what you were thinking after the fact that put the negative spin on it. In other words, we would say you were in joyful excitement until you weren't until you began focusing negatively. In other words, when you were focused upon the positive aspects of the really good ride, in both cases. <laughs> <laughs> then you were tuned in, tapped in, turned on. <laughs> but once the ride was over, in both cases, <laughs> then you focused in a lackful way and uh, introduced resistance into the experience. So the excitement in both cases at first was sourced with me saying, this is a good experience, go for it. Yes. Um, and then afterwards, my hindsight on it, when I was feeling regret, that was disconnected with source. And, and in both cases, you were general and in alignment. It wasn't until you got into the specifics that the discord began to occur. Even though it was specifically positive experiences at first, in the specifics in terms of looking back at it and being like, oh, that, didn't, that car is too expensive. Or... Well, in general terms, I want this car. In general uh -huh. terms, I like this car. In specific terms, I have to pay for this car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in general terms, I like this girl. In general terms, it's really fun. In specific terms, she wants me to stick around forever. <laughs> <laughs> So I can continue to work on art of allowing, looking back at these experiences and coming into harmony with them um, and continue to kind of just move forward. As well, well, we wouldn't yeah. spend too much time looking back because everything that you've lived has given you a basis of understanding, a vibrational basis of understanding. Everything that you've lived has established a place marker. It's established who you really are vibrationally. So all you have to do is in the moment, pay attention to how well you're blending with that or not. But really, we're all making 
too much of all of this. Just be easier about it. Just make a decision to have more fun. Go to that general place of I can't get it wrong and I never get it done. And how good is it in this moment? We promise you, you will not be an irresponsible being by following that path of least resistance. We promise you that will not lead you down an irresponsible path. It cannot. Instead, it will connect you with the broadest and deepest of intentions and knowledge. We want to paint some sort of a picture for you so that you can feel. So here you are. Let's say that you are contemplating an activity. It doesn't matter what it is. Writing, dating, driving, touring. It doesn't matter. You're contemplating this idea. And as you contemplate it, you bring it into focus. And as you bring it into focus, non-physical energies join you. But they don't just join you in the focus as far as you can take it right now. They join you in the vortex version of that focus because they know everything that you are and everything that you want and everything that you've come to, most importantly, everything that you are. And so they focus there in the reality, in the doneness, in the final version of what you're asking for. We all go there and revel in not the potential of where you're going, but the reality of where we are as a result of the focus that you set into motion. Are you starting to sort of feel this a little bit? It's what holds your earth spinning in its orbit. You've got to trust it. You've got to know that there is so much intentionality of which you are an integral part that is poised and pointed and focused in every moment of your experience. There are no random events that happen. Every person you rendezvous with and everything that happens in your experience is the result of some allowance or not allowance of that, which means the potential for peak moments, moment after moment after moment, is huge. It really defies Esther's vocabulary to find enough descriptive words to define it. The word joy and excitement, neither one even come close to the excellence of that kind of focus, to the realness and the focusedness and the clarity of who you really are, the vividness, the tactileness, the deliciousness of who you are in any moment in time and what you're evoking from the others with whom you're interacting. It is so vivid and spectacular. So here is all this potential and you are living up to that potential in varying degrees. As you understand, and this is what we are wanting to accomplish as a result of these conversations that we've had here today, as you understand the realness of these non-physical energies focusing with you. We think it's going to increase your determination to focus yourself into closer alignment with all of that. Because less than that vivid life is just not enough for the likes of you. It's just not enough. So as you accept that there is a potential focus that you could click into or not, that you reach for and reach for and reach for, then that alignment becomes what you're reaching for, not the details. In other words, you're not trying so hard to define the details. You're working to accomplish the alignment which contains details beyond your ability to eat. There's more in your vortex than you could sit and write. And you are a really good writer. It comes through you very quickly. You could not define it in anything short of a year of constant writing just what's there right now. It's huge, you see. But you don't have to define it. All you have to do is come into alignment with it and the part of it that that's perfect for this moment in time will pop it into manifested reality in a way that you can see it. So that the perfect words come out of you, the perfect people are rendezvousing with you. Are you getting the sense of this? Have we gone too far in our wanting you to realize how much we are all in on this leading edge moment that you are living? No, it, it feels good. <laughs> What we said with all of that, which was um, more words than anyone should have to endure in a short period of time. <laughs> what we're saying with, to you with all of that is you're making too much. You're getting all balled up in the details and you're not putting enough emphasis on how you feel. And to put emphasis on how you feel is about going general. 
And when you go general about how you want to feel, the details of what the path of least resistance is will occur to you. And there are a lot of people in your life that you're holding there as if you need to prove it to yourself that you can get along with anybody. When the reality of it is the path of least resistance doesn't include most of them. <laughs> yeah. The path of least resistance is a clearer path that includes you and you. The path of least resistance is about how you feel and the clarity that flows. You see, there are a lot of people who would say, and this is really going to bring all of this into a really good perspective. There are a lot of people who would say, writers are delusional because they detach themselves from reality and focus in an unreal world. And we say they're the closest thing we know to aligned beings because they disengage from the clutter that is irrelevant and they focus upon what matters. And in the process, in the engagement of that, they feel how they're supposed to feel, which is those peak moments. Now that made more sense to those of you who are creatively involved in specific ways like writing or painting. Those of you who make music, who write lyrics, who paint paintings, you know what it feels like to be tuned in and for it to flow. You know the feeling of writer's block or painter's block. You know what it feels like when it's flowing and what it feels like when it's not. And we would like everyone to be able to apply that feeling to the conversation that they're having with someone at dinner or to the conversation that they're having with the television as they're shouting back at it. On, on, on this feeling good part. You know why you're having a hard time now? No. And you'll come back around to it. It's because we took you so general that the specifics temporarily are feeling irrelevant. So it's a little hard to get them back into focus. But bring them into focus because you do live in this world where focusing on what you want matters. So talk about it. Well, my point was, was going back to that example that, and, and I think this applies to, to other people as well, we get, when I'm writing, I get really excited sometimes and I'll start thinking about how it's gonna be at the end. And I get so fired up that I can leave my work or an athlete can get really excited that they scored a touchdown and then they waste energy celebrating instead of coming back to the game and focusing on what they really want, which is to win the game. First of all, we want to say you can never waste energy celebrating. Because, because that celebrating is focused in the greater energy. That's really, ooh, really good. This is really the thing that we want you to hear. Which is better, joy, excitement, or celebration? In other words, they're just words, blah, 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 blah. But in celebration, isn't there a pointed revelation or reveille? Isn't there something big in that celebration that they can't contain, they don't want to contain? But to use that example, sometimes they'll, they'll celebrate and get a penalty for over-celebrating. And then they get 15 <laughs> yards back. So what does a penalty do? Does it make them curse the ground they walked on? Does it make them bury their head in shame? Or does it focus them on what they want? Or does it make it a better game? Have you ever watched a game where the one team was so outmatched by the other one that it was just a sure thing right from the beginning who was going to win? So you just go get popcorn? I mean, I guess it does make it Don't a better game. Don't you like it when they evoke more stuff from one another? And isn't it always wonderful regardless of how it turns out temporarily right now? I, I'd rather not be called for the penalty though is my point. I'd rather take the touchdown and come back to the field and score another touchdown. I'd rather save it for that. I want to keep scoring touchdowns and keep winning. Well, we think that's great, but we don't know anyone who has the clarity to score touchdown after touchdown who hasn't experienced equivalent penalties that make them desire that and focus upon it. In other words, what we're really talking about here is using all of the, the, the wave of creation is equal what you don't want, what you do want, and to the degree that you don't want it, to that degree you do want it. In other words, it's all part of the honing of this. And so when you are willing to see the whole game, the way the source within you sees it, who saw the penalty happen but doesn't go to his knees in despair and regret about it, 
No judgment about it. In other words, the path of least resistance is part of the process, you see. Mm -hmm. We're talking about something more general. This is a good analogy. If you're talking in humans' perspectives of watching football games, of course, Abraham must be completely out to lunch because everyone knows that guy should have stayed in focus and should not have made that mistake. Everyone knows it. He should never grab the ball and run the wrong way on the field either.